don't see anything in Blitz though. Are we live? I can't tell. I think we are. Let's it's see. got a counter here, but it doesn't have a counter. Yep, we are live. We're live. How do you check on YouTube? I did not check on YouTube. I checked on Instagram. Bear with us while we work out the logistics of this. We're using a new program that we haven't used before. Um, trying to go live in more than one place at a time. So we'll just uh, hang out here for a half second. <laughs> Pretty sure we're live on Instagram. I can see that. We're just checking on YouTube now. Funnily enough, going to be our first YouTube video on the new channel. We haven't introduced ourselves or anything. We'll have to do that after. Apparently, we don't come up in searches. Oh, goody. Well, this is fine. It's fine. All right. So, welcome to our live talking about orchards. Um, specifically talking about our orchard and the one we did before and the one we're going to be doing. Um, because we're not, I mean, we're not professional orchard planners, but we are now planning our second one. And yeah, figured we'd let you all know what we're, what we're doing on that. Yeah, we went through all the effort of putting in a big kind of overly ambitious homestead orchard. Um, and we ended up leaving it the very next year. Yeah, which was not the plan. None of that was the plan. But here we are, and we're happy about it. So that's what we're, uh, that's what we're doing. Yeah, and I, I don't think we made, like, the one benefit of doing something twice, as you can say, you learn from your mistakes. I don't think we had any major mistakes. There's little things that we're going to, you know, learn from it and do perhaps yeah. differently, but nothing yeah. major. It's not like we, we you know... Yeah. We didn't totally fuck up or anything. Yeah, it went okay <laughs> the first time. Yeah, so. it went well, and someone will enjoy it one day, um, hopefully, although we don't really want to think about that. Um, I would suspect yeah. the home orchard, based on who's there now, will be dead in a couple of years. Yeah. It's just going to be overrun because the grass grows about five feet tall, and they're not cutting it. So, so that was at our last homestead, not this one. So we're just kind of starting all the things again for this one. Um, which is kind of cool to be able to do it twice. Um, and I mean, we also decided pretty quickly that the orchard we had there was too small. Um, I mean, most people would probably think it was way too big, but we're a little bit extra. So our last one was uh, about a third of an acre. Um, and we only had a certain amount of area that we could even use for it. So that's what we did. We packed them in a little tighter than we wanted to. But we were going to be heavily managing it. Um, and this year, um, if you saw on our stories the other day, I posted kind of a general area. Um, I should bring that up so that I can show you guys. Um, we, uh, we showed kind of where we're thinking it's going to be. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's not turning out very well. Just check our stories. It's in there under orchard. Um, but we have this big ridge that you can kind of see goes in a diagonal. Um, and we're thinking it's going to be a nice spot to have like a nice 90 degree on one half, like one side of it, and then follow the ridge on the other. So for spacing, it's going to get interesting. It's in a this. pretty, it's a pretty big area. Our last yeah. home orchard was a little bit oversized as it was, and we're going even bigger. So it's too small. It's far too small. It, the problem is like mm -hmm. a lot of people, we end up wanting everything. So it adds up to a lot and then you need a lot of space for it. Um, yep. So, and, and now we're in an even better growing zone. We're in zone 5A. Yay, you're here. Hi there. Woo! So we actually have a, many more options now. A lot opens up at 5A. Yeah. Uh, we were in 4A yeah. before, and uh, we pushed it to 5 on one or two things just to see. And we're hoping, we were hoping that with global warming, things would just kind of work out. Hoping. Um, <laughs> roll, rolling the dice on that. But now we're in 5A, and it, it probably almost doubles what we can grow. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really exciting. And I mean, it's funny because a lot of people, when we were talking about moving from Ontario to New Brunswick, um, people are like, oh, well, we, we just started. Basically, we've been like logistically dealing with stuff. You, mi you missed the whole thing. No. <laughs> so as we're saying, thanks for watching. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we just started. Um, so we, uh, when we moved, everyone's like, oh my God, you know, New Brunswick gets a lot of snow and it's going to be really cold. It's going to be this, that, and the other thing. And 
uh, when we started actually looking at the at the data and at the the zones and stuff, it almost feels like moving to a tropical paradise <laughs> compared to where we were. We were in this really horrendous microclimate before, where I mean it, the wind never stopped ever ever. And so it didn't matter if it was snowing or not, the snow was moving and we had like eight foot, 10 foot drifts. Like it was just, I mean, this year the snow has fallen and it stays where it's fallen, which is a really weird concept to us. So that's been, uh, that's been nice. Plus just being able to be in the five, you know, cause we're used to that going through catalogs and going through like different websites to buy stuff. And we're like, oh, cool. Can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do that. And then this year we're just like, oh my God, we, we can't do lemons. We still can't do lemons, but yeah, we I mean, have wind, wind, windows still. That's loud, fine, but, you know. <laughs> um, but mind you, yeah. Whipple Tree um, had a lot for even Zone Four. Yeah. So they yeah. they were pretty good. They even had stuff available for Zone Three. Yeah. Uh, so they had a lot of the colder hardy uh, stuff, and yeah. a lot of the nurseries don't bother with yeah. it. Um, so it was nice to see Whipple Tree have that. Yeah. Another common one is I think it's Cold Hardy Fruit Trees. Ca or something like that. Yeah. If you Google that, you'll probably find it if that's not exactly it. Uh, that's another one who has a lot of uh, cold zone options. Yeah. But we like we like Whiffle Tree. So Whiffle Tree is a company out of Ontario. Um, they ship all over Canada. They, yeah, they ship all over Canada. Um, but it's not, I mean, like it's it's tiered as you go further out on your prices. So um, the, the shipping's fair though. And when we had it, when we had them delivered before, um they all came really nicely everything was alive i mean i guess that was our one error we did have some hazelnuts die um, but we found out after that we could have called them and they would have replaced them and we just assumed it was used like it was our error and we just moved on with life um but they're really good their selection is is awesome um and they're live for 2022 they just yeah today updated yeah like like so, a minute ago so yeah, that very, was exciting. yeah yeah we just got the alert so yeah um, um, everyone get on there, but don't buy it until we tell you that we bought our stuff so that we don't, you know, sell out, yeah. you know, we don't want to send too many no, people there. Um, <laughs> um, the only thing we had that died was, um, hazel. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and, and then again, I, it was probably us because it was the last one we planted. They probably got too dry and then they died because it took us forever. And I mean, like Kenzie at the time was only like three. Um, so it was a lot. We had an, it was a lot. We had an, a crab apple. Yeah. the first year we, now we learned yeah. since then yeah. we should have cut it off and helped it establish better yeah but we didn't know that and we liked seeing it so yeah um uh whipple tree erica uh so it's w-h-i-f-f-l-e-t-r-e-e -E. um and they're i want to say they're in like london or windsor i'm not sure it's ontario um, um and they ship yeah. uh, i think you get an option i don't know if you choose it right away when you put your order in or if it comes later but you get to choose kind of a window yeah. uh, and then or you can say let them decide based on the weather when they're shipping the trees yeah. and um, your growing zone yeah and we used to so we used to actually work for a company where we did ship trees um and it is if you don't know for sure, like definitely go with their recommendation because I mean, there's nothing worse than a bunch of stuff running up and like immediately dying. Um, cause trees are real tough until they're not. So you can get them in like earlier if you have the time, yeah. uh, they're coming dormant. Mm -hmm. So get them out there and plant them right away. Um, I think we had ours for like five or six days before we planted them. The problem is going to um, happen if it's too hot. Yeah. Don't let the box sit out in the sun, put it in a garage or a basement or something. Yeah. For us, it was cold enough. I think we just threw it under the deck. Yeah. So it was out of the sun and it was cold. Um, oh, hey, Brittany. So it's not like with annuals where you have to wait until uh, May 2, 4, or better yet, June 1st or something like that. Well, there we go. Um, we got a witness to what our last orchard looked like. Yeah, Brittany, yeah. You, you, can, you can give us updates on, on the, how, how long that orchard lives. Yeah, um, it may not live very long. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, where'd we go? We love Whiffle Tree. Whiffle Tree's great. Um, but in general, if you can get bare root seedlings, it doesn't really matter where you're getting them from. Yeah, they, they um, a lot better. They come. Our experience is they've shown up larger than they uh, even advertise. I guess they want to underestimate it so people aren't mad. Um, oh, and Ben too. So we were watching your stuff this afternoon, this morning. Yes, we were. Yeah. yeah. So we were expecting, you know, one foot, two foot tall trees, and we're getting two and three foot or bigger. Some of them were showing up and they're six, six feet tall. So. Um, yeah, yes. they were big. I mean, like they barely fit in the box. It was. And then Lindsay yeah. was horrified because I immediately <laughs> put them in the ground and I cut them like basically yeah. in half. Uh, um, like, what are you doing? No. Because <laughs> the look we were going for, and these are kind of management things that you, everyone has to decide for themselves. 
is we wanted it to branch out at like knee height, mm -hmm. really low. Um, yeah. And as long as you had a growing um, spot on it below that, uh, it was fine. And in some, for some trees, you can actually cut it even when there's not one there and it'll create one. But not all trees do that, so be careful. Yeah. Don't, don't just assume it yeah. will. We were, we were consulting the Googles and all the books <clears throat> before we were doing that. Yes. Um, Lindsay's like, so. yeah, it's, you're good to cut it. And I'll, I cut it. She's like, wait. I'm like, well, you know, too yeah. late. So. <laughs> so it was probably our fault that hazelnuts died. Um, but our, our orchard at the last place was 30 trees. Um, and you know, we spaced them a little, um, a little too close. Um, I'll get to that question in just a sec. Um, so we, we placed them a little bit too closely. Uh, not for the trees, but for my truck. So <laughs> we want to be able to get the truck, but like our thinking yeah. was mainly that we'd get the um, riding lawnmower uh, around it just for yeah. mowing, and also and we did. It was a pain, but we did. Maybe have a little um, trailer on the mower for um, uh, a sprayer for foliar feeding. Yeah, um, yeah. like not like pesticides, just the you know. Yeah. No, uh, these are other management things. You have to decide how okay you are with pesticides and which ones, or are you completely not okay? and why um and then coming up with a plan of how to deal with stuff um in lieu of those yeah in general we don't want to we don't want to use them at all but if it was a situation where we were going to lose like literally every single tree if we didn't then we would we would just be careful when we ate them a lot of people say you're not an organic gardener until something horrible happens and then you have to decide whether yeah. to spray something or not i think when it comes down to it i'm not but i will try to avoid it as yeah. best i can prevent problems so that it doesn't come yeah. to that. But. So for um, for two to three foot trees, um, how many years to fruit? So we planted two years ago. We would have been expecting fruit this year had we stayed. Some of them, like it's most of them, right? These are all grafted onto rootstock. Um, I think like we just mentioned, the one crab apple flowered and created a crab apple that first year. Yeah. Um, the first two not... years, they suggest usually that you don't let it fruit. If it tries, cut cut the uh, the flower off. Um, don't let it do it so that it keeps uh, focusing on root growth and and um, and branching out, especially because you're probably possibly going to be pruning it heavily during that time. So it's got enough to deal with, you know, without trying to produce fruit. Yeah. And um, I, I should probably, we should probably mention our general goals with this too, because I mean, we kind of have two different goals. Like we're doing a whole bunch of like permaculture food forest stuff around the property. Um, but we are also are having this like super manicured looking orchard. Um, so, for us, we want to be able to get in there and uh, collect the fruit without having to use like super tall ladders and like, you know, have it be a whole thing. We're I wanted to. I wanted no. I wanted no ladders. Well, you're, I wanted, you're tall. You get to for me that. no ladders. I wanted it within. <laughs> I wanted the each tree to be within eight by eight by eight. Yeah, I, I need a ladder. Cut everything for that came out of that half cube. of the kitchen. So I mean, I just. Um, so the answer to your question, yeah. how long? For fruit, depends on the types of trees, yeah. um, depends on, on a few factors. Not um, nearly as long as you think, though. Like, not a few years. Crazy. You should be good to go. Yeah. Um, and poten awesome. potentially earlier. Um, it really depends. But uh, you're not waiting like 10 years. No, I thought it was going to be like, you know, oh, my kid might enjoy it when she's 20. No. Um, but um, no, it's like we would have been eating off of that this year. So we'll, we'll be talking, um, I guess, about. Um, dwarf versus the different sizes yeah. and things like that. Yeah, because um, Whipple Tree does have dwarf trees, which is super exciting. And they also have semi-dwarf and then like all the big ones. Um, that in itself is not enough to go by, unfortunately. The, the individual, the specific rootstock that it's on, they might classify it as a dwarf, but that doesn't mean a specific size exactly. Yeah. It's a classification, but it's it, there's a range there. And the it could specific be a dwarf for that type. Rootstocks typically will put trees out into certain sizes. Um, but it also depends on what tree you're grafting onto it. So it, it does Yay, alter. Ordering. Um, um, yeah, no ladders. Ladders are not my, I mean, yeah. No, even with a dwarf yeah. one, dwarfs don't, unless it's a mini dwarf, and I don't think Whiffle Trees categorizes no. any of them as mini dwarfs. Because yeah. there's like micro ones that are super tiny. And they're, yeah. under, they're basically shrubs. You, if you didn't prune it, it would still be at the max six feet. Um, but there are, most dwarfs are still pruning them to keep them within arm's reach. Yeah. So it's a dwarf as far as like an apple tree goes. But you would still need a ladder if you yeah. don't. If you're not but not careful. for a while. I mean, like they're they're eventually going to grow up. You're like, pruning. The goal you know. with your pruning is to keep it shorter, yeah. even if it's a dwarf, and to keep the branches moving sideways as opposed to keep. They always try to pop up. And you got to cut that off and leave a growing one that's going to keep going this way. And the first two or three years, you're gonna it's going to try to go up, and then you cut it off, and it'll go out, and then go up, and then you cut it off, and you try to 
branch them out laterally so that all the fruit <laughs> are, you know, sideways. Yeah. We'll do high. more videos on that because like that, he starts talking pruning and I was like, ah. Pruning is I, a science and an art. It's, yes. Uh, and a lot of times you just, it's kind of guesswork. You're hoping for the best. Yeah. People will also tie branches down during this training phase and try to, like if the branch is kind of going up, they'll try to pull it down yeah. with weights. And if you do that for a couple months or through a summer, then when you remove the weights, the branch stays there. So there's things you can do. Yeah. Um, and it's worth doing it in those early years because um, then you're going to have the tree for a long time. And once, once it's the shape you want, you're just cutting off excess and keeping it that shape. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of done for you. Yeah. Um, as so far as actual placement, do you want to talk about placement or are you still on dwarf? Um, well, dwarfs don't live as long. That's something you need to keep in mind yeah. also. Um, I, I don't have in front of me the exact years, but I know the smaller the tree, the less long it lives um, as far as the uh, you know, rootstocks. Um, Which is another reason that we've got a whole bunch of varieties that are in their full size that we're going to use for food forests around the edges of the property. Um, because we want, I mean, we already have apples here. Like I think most people, if they saw the property would be like, are you crazy? You're drowning in apples. There's about eight, um, eight apple trees already. And I mean, when they produce, I mean, like some of them are probably a hundred years old and they produce like absolute crazy. Um, but we want more and we still want that like look. And then we want the mix of like wild permaculture stuff going on too. You can say hi. Hey. So yeah. <laughs> with dwarf apple trees, I believe at a certain point, it just kind of gets, it gets old and then it starts to get the potential for disease goes up and it doesn't have the same defenses and you'll probably end up losing it. Yeah. Um, so with dwarfs, our plan was, even though we had already, we chose to do 30 trees right off the get go, we figured, oh, well, one day we'll end up with 60. We'll just kind of plant five every other year into the future and then it'll kind of stagger it. Um, so they're not all dead <laughs> at some point. Um, also, we had we had some semi dwarfs. The challenge we were running into is some of them were only available as semi dwarfs. Some of the things we just we wanted. really wanted them. Yeah. So and we were and it was it was harder too. Because, we're gonna talk. Um, it was harder too because we needed uh, like a variety within zone four. Um, and some of them actually that's not what I'm gonna talk about. Some of them need um, a fertilizer, like they or a pollinator. They need a, or pollinizer is the word I'm trying. It's not, it's not a bee and it's not a product. It's they need another tree of the same type that's different so that they actually produce fruit. Yeah, not um, two of the same variety, a different, yeah. um, a different variety um, of something that can pollinate it. Yeah. Um, and so some but are- they say that, like, I mean, like Whipple Tree is really good about that. Like if you read through the description, it's gonna be like, okay, like you need one of these or you need something else or you're not gonna have any fruit. And when it says uh, semi-fertile, it, it means that it can do it, yeah. but you're still better to get to. Yeah. Um, so if you needed any excuse to buy more, if it says semi, don't trust it. Just get another yeah. one. <laughs> you're going to feel, you're going to be happier with more fruit anyways. Yeah. Um, Cause I mean like worst case you compost it or the bit or the deer eat it. It's or, a good excuse I mean, to get a, a backyard whatever. pig yeah. and you can feed that to them. And yeah. yeah. Um, I know deer a lot of homesteaders are all about that, you know, like closed systems and making sure to use all the stuff. So, I mean, I'm not really worried about having excess apples because there's so many uses for them. Um, beyond that, like if someone else, you know, nearby has a big, you know, crop failure or something. Um, I mean, that's kind of the community end of it too. Like you want to have enough so that like no one's out of apples. I mean, I say apples, we're not just doing apples. We've got a whole, we've got a lot of fruit. So yes. they, yeah, it's, it's basically everything. Um, yes. Now, yeah. like we honestly went through the catalog from last year and we were like, okay, literally everything. I mean, I've got six or seven pages of things written out here, which I mean, we'll see what we end up ordering because I mean, prices. Yeah. We'll see what the, we don't even know what the prices are. We were just like, this is a wish list. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, ideally we get all of it, but they all seem to be about 40, we'll 45 bucks or something. But um, so semi dwarfs, they get big. You know, it, it, yeah. even with dwarf in the name. Yeah, they're like 12 to 16 feet. In our so. system before, we were planning on still yeah. cutting it, trying to keep it within an 8 by 8 by 8 cube. Yeah. Now, with the semi-dwarfs, that was going to mean a lot of pruning each year yeah. to keep it restrained to that size. It was going to be doable because I've seen people keep them, like, ridiculously short. So mm -hmm. I know it's possible. It's just more work. Yeah. Oh, and I should mention, too, uh, we're, we're live on YouTube as well. So I Possibly. believe maybe. Actually, right. See, maybe we're not. We don't see a caption, so I don't know if it's working. Um, not true. Either way, we're gonna like try to save this video. So if you miss anything, you gotta go. We're like whatever. It'll be available. I'm not sure if that yeah. works on Instagram. 
yeah. So as we're yammering on various topics, if you guys have any questions, yeah. feel free to ask them. Yeah, Kenzie. Um, so other things are um, other than the size and the spacing. You want to make sure that at the full size uh, and whatever you're going to prune it to, uh, you've got enough space in between that you're not mowing under branches. Um, yeah. You might be doing a little bit, depending on how you're managing them, you might be doing that anyways. But you don't want to be whacked in the face with stuff if you can avoid it. Yeah. Um, well, it just makes it harder, right? Because especially if you're trying to train them to be low. Um, I mean, like, I really like the idea of using, like, sheep and stuff underneath. Right. And that's a little bit, it's okay. Um, it's a little bit beyond what we're planning for this year, but maybe eventually. Also, at this size, they're just going to eat them. So, I mean, we can't do that. But we, we planned on, we gave them 16 feet of space from center of tree to center of tree in a grid going every which direction. Um, yeah. And that's how we had it set up at our last place. Yeah. And uh, it's it, super it was, time consuming to plan that out properly. Oh my god! Yeah, if you, have, mean, if you was, have a laser level, that's better than what we were doing. We were doing sight yeah. lines and stuff. It was a bit of a mess, but yeah. Um, um, but it looked phenomenal when we were done, and we had it like joined in with these garden beds on the other side, and like we're yeah, we're super. We we saw um, a <laughs> um, very formal orchard that was in a gardening competition it won some award in the uk You're and good. i saw i saw this and that's what i wanted it yeah. was just it was over the top in uh, in the looks and it was just it, it was perfectly pruned horizontal they had the latex paint going up to the exact perfect height they used the level to get it you know exactly just so and they were all in rows and separated yeah. and uh you know with the the white paint and everything it just looks really nice and they had perfect cubes of um, different grasses around them that didn't need to be mowed. It was going to stay short. Yeah. And they so it, it, they had mowed really pathways nice. and then little cubes that was allowed to grow taller around them. That was on a Monty, Monty Don episode, I think. I think so. Um, so that's that's what we wanted to create. Yeah, we, we've got this, like, and we, we talked about everything being, like, super manicured and, like, straight lines and, like, all this stuff. Um, what goes around all these things are, like, wild borders. I mean, like, we like, we like both. And we, I mean, it's really important to have those edges. Like those edges are where your biodiversity and your health of your farm like come from, right? Like it's so important to have that. Um, but we also, I mean, like we, we like what we like and we, I mean, you know, everything's got to kind of work yeah. for each individual person. It's, it's right? balancing because so, um, in nature, straight lines don't happen very much, but there's, there's, uh, there are uses for straight lines for people. Yeah. Uh, for equipment, for mowing, that you're not mowing around stuff all the time. Well, and even chicken tractors or any kind of bird tractor. I mean, like, we want to be tractoring more of our stuff, and it makes more sense to be doing it somewhere like the orchard. Or if you wanted to irrigate. Um, it's all just yeah. straight lines. So, so lo lots of value there. So we, we had a certain vision, and that kind of uh, decided our spacing for us. Most people, yeah. it's possible you have a certain amount of size that you're working with, and you're, mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out how many you can fit in there. Um, you definitely need more space than you think, though. I mean, once you start measuring it, like, I think we thought we were going to fit at least twice what we were. And as it was, we had to, like, extend the area to get half of it. It was it was kind of wild. Yeah. Um, so you need good sun in wherever you're sticking them. Make sure they're not shaded out heavily. Um, so good sun and good airflow. It doesn't need to be – you don't want to draft it because then in the winter you probably run into problems. But, um, but even still, I mean, this year we're planning for about two-thirds of an acre – uh, for this orchard, and I mean, we're probably going to be able to get 40 or 50 trees in it. Yeah. Which, so on one hand, it's like, okay, you need more space, but then if you look at the actual size requirements, so so we use uh, GONV for that. Um, it's super helpful because um, we can start trying to like figure out what we're doing. Because I mean, we have to order all these plants, right? So we kind of it's January, but we need to know what we're doing in June and July and August and September um, to order appropriately. Because I don't know if all this stuff's going to be available then. I mean, I, everyone seems real antsy to get their hands on everything this year, and this year's maybe a little bit different. Even with nurseries really so, ramping up production, um, they're not keeping up with the amount of people who are buying this stuff. So that's why we're rushing to get these orders in. Um, if you need annual seeds, do it tomorrow. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly. Like, I did mine in October, basically. It was right away. Erica's got a question. Like, just... Um, Never grown trees, only with a few. Apples are a good beginner. Um, They're mostly yeah. the same. Apples are good. Yep. Um, yeah. I don't think most of them, like you deal with most of them pretty well the same. They have different pests, different diseases. Um, some people 
find out that some do better on their property. So the ones that have less problems on their property would be easier, but you won't know that till you do it, right? You plant something and if it gets some horrible disease that just happens to be in your soil yeah. more than ours, you, you find that out by doing it. Um, so yes, apples are a good one. Mm -hmm. if, I would grow whatever you think you'll use. Um, that's, I mean, that is a, that's a big thing too. I mean, like we've got all kinds of crazy things I've never even eaten before. Um, so that'll be an adventure. And yeah, I mean, apples are a good one just because <laughs> like everyone knows about apples, right? You yeah. can eat them fresh or turn it into any number of things. Um, yeah. and that's actually another thing with choosing varieties. Um, uh, so only for, okay. Yeah. We'll hit that next. Um, so as far as varieties, like I like, we like eating fresh fruit, but we know ourselves and we need to preserve most of it because we're not, I mean, like I collected apples so many times. Um, if I, I maybe ate one apple this year, like it's super embarrassing. Like, was, I mean, not that I ate one apple, I ate one apple off our trees. I, I got into them a bit more maybe. than that, but I yeah. think there's also a physical limitation. Maybe some people do better than others, but I would never leave the toilet if all I ate was fruit. Yeah. So I got to balance that out with some meat and cheese or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, so but it lasts all winter. Yeah. Um, Turn it into things, um, you know, jellies and jams and, and dehydrated for like trail mix and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, turn it into as many things as you can. So as far as I'm uh, feeding people, um, see that's, and we, okay, so we, we talk about this all the time with every single time that we do anything. Um, what we prepare for is everything to go wrong and then for it all to go wrong again and then for it all to go wrong again. So basically when we're looking at, like, let's take apples, for instance. So we have um, one, two, three, three. So we've, we've chosen three different varieties of apples. Um, now, to... We're probably going to do two of each. So we're looking at a bit of six apple trees, like apples, just apples. Um, we have about eight apple trees right now. And based on the amount of fruit that we got off of those eight trees this year and the fruit that fell, um, that would have fed 10, that would have kept at least 10 people in apples all year round, preserved or, or otherwise. Um, it was a good crop though. It, it may not have, and that's why we have the diversity, but I mean, two or three trees that are producing well, there's, there's no reason why that's not enough. Yeah. And, um, and maximizing the number of fruit also isn't actually the name of the game, yeah. um, which is a whole side issue. Um, if a tree is overladen with fruit, it can actually cause the branches to break and yeah. then you lost the whole branch and you've got a wound in your plant um, to deal with. So be careful of that. Uh, but basically, fruit trees produce a crap load. You're yeah, going to have like too it's much ridiculous. Like of it's, any given one. It's it's yeah. more, if you have a good year, it's more than you want yeah. of it. You're going to need to turn it into stuff. Yeah. But if you're looking at selling it, and I mean, like, you've got a whole Barter different, it. like, market you have as well with the cabins, right? So, I mean, that's, hey, Vanessa. Vanessa. Um, hey, Kenzie, you want to see Vanessa? Well, you can't see her, but you can, you can say hi. Um, hey. Hey. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, that gives you a whole different, I mean, like that could even be like, like, Hey, you want to go apple picking and like add that as an add on to like what you're doing or whatever. Um, I mean like a handful of trees would definitely do it. Um, yeah. Kenzie, come back, come back. Yeah. So, um, um and also actually on that note, um, okay, okay real quick, you. Vanessa wants to see you. Just say hi. Vanessa wants to see you. There. <laughs> Um, she, um, she talks about you all the time, like all the time. Um, that's another thing, sorry, with varieties. So, um, another good way to make sure that you're actually maximizing what you're getting and minimizing the chance of failure is making sure that they're ripe, they're ripening at different times. So like, I think for our apples, the varieties we chose, we've got everything from like mid August to like, I want to say like mid October. Mm -hmm. So if there's crazy early frosts or they're, because often if they're an earlier ripening variety, then they're an earlier flowering variety. So if you get a late frost, then you might lose everything off of that tree, but then nothing off of the tree from October. But then if you get a late one, then maybe you're losing your Octobers, but you still have your Septembers. The, so that's almost frost, as important as how The frost how many. knocking off the buds, the flowers are going to be a major problem and especially for certain types of fruit more than others um so the later fruiting ones are usually later flowering ones are a little safer um 
sometimes it'll be spelled out in the catalog. Sometimes it won't. Um, another thing about but that's info you can find. I mean, like honestly, YouTube the variety, and then you're going to get even like with your area, and like often you've got someone, or at least your zone. You can um, find yields also. It's yeah. not going to be exact because it's going to depend on so many factors, but yeah. you can get an idea compared comparing the two. If one's double the yield of the first one, that should stay true. But um, I mean, like you're talking bushels, like like bushel yeah. baskets of apples. It's uh, and and other like yeah, I have more pay. experience with apples than the other fruit. So I don't want to, I'm like, what's the other thing we have? Quince? I mean, like, I don't even know what a quince looks like. Um, but it's a, it's a tree that's available. So we're getting it because I mean, if everything else fails, I'm sure I'm going to figure out how to cook a quince fruit. Yeah. Um, if anyone um, wants to tell me what that is. That awesome. Another thing we're doing, cause we have uh, a bunch of space. So we're going to have some fruit trees some standard ones that we're just planting out far out in the corners and things. We're looking for the most disease resistant ones to yeah. do that because we're not going to baby them. So the hope is that they just are okay. And feeding the um, deer and feeding the stuff and you know, whatever, like. Yeah. And another thing you can do also is you can uh, germinate the seeds from your fruit trees. Um, some people have a misunderstanding about what happens when you do that. They say, oh, you can't do that. The only thing that's going to happen is it's not going to be the same apple tree that you got. It's not going to produce the same fruit, but it's going to produce an apple. Right, it, it just might it might be small, it might be more crab apple like, or it might be big still. Who knows? You, know, you don't want to know. I don't think we care. But um, fixing apple trees. Oh, that's a good one. Um, yes and no, and we're, we're going to be doing it. Because we, have, we have it. We have three so. on their last legs, one of which cannot be saved. Two yeah. of which, like, they're getting old though too, so yeah. it's, it's hard to say whether they can be saved. But they need to be pruned. If you save them. And then you're getting apples off of them. Then as your other ones are growing, then you don't have to go without apples. Yeah. So, um, so, so yes and no. I mean, like we've done a little bit of it and we've helped out with a little bit of it. Um, but we're going to actively be doing it on some of our own trees here this year. So pruning the general, uh, rule of thumb for pruning and like how much, how many branches you actually want is it should be that when you chop all the stuff off and you do it usually in the early spring when it's still dormant, yeah. you can do it fall too when it's dormant, but why do it then and then still have frost damage? Yeah. Let the frost damage stuff and then cut stuff off after. Um, and basically you're going to have a panic attack when it's done. You're going to think you've killed your tree because there's like no more trees. <clears throat> the most you're supposed to cut off is like 25% in a given year. But that's um, a lot. I mean, that's, I mean, that looks crazy yeah. when you do it. I mean, um, so. You can do it more aggressively than that, but you might be sacrificing the fruit that year. Yeah. Uh, but basically, when you're chopping stuff off, you want it to be that a bird could fly through the branches any which way past and into that tree and fly out the other end without hitting a branch. So it, it, there's a lot of airspace. Um, and trees on their own do not do that. Yeah, they get exactly. really thick. So there's probably, if they haven't been pruned in a while, like we've got some here that are, are almost shrubs, they need to be pruned heavily. Although um, we should we should go visit. We should go visit. We've done almost no traveling since we got here. We were like, yeah. we're going to go around everywhere. The furthest I've gotten is Gagetown. And we live in the Gornish. And I'm like, cool. That was like 30 minutes. So we yeah. do want to, uh, and I was looking at the cabins. I was like, oh, they're so pretty. Oh, another, another factor about oh. when you're picking kind of what you want to be growing here. Um, you need to make sure if it needs a pollinizer, it means that it, they, not just that you need to get two, it's that they need to be flowering at the same time. Yeah. So, so they usually <laughs> that the best bet is means it's ones yeah. that have the fruit ripen at the same time yeah. as a guess as to when they're flowering because they need to be at the same time. It's not just oh I got two apple trees. If one stops flowering and then the other one starts, neither of them were pollinated by each other. Yeah. So, and I mean that's how you go from wanting one variety of apple to suddenly having eight varieties of apples. You want earlies because you need a pair of right. earlies. You want lates. You need a pair of lates. You know, this is kind of I mean like and literally when I'm talking about lists, I mean like I've like. That's one of the five pages. Like it's crazy. Um, so we are um, we moved. Oh no, it's good. That's why we do this. Um, and it's just you right now, so don't worry about yeah. it. This is, this is a video for the future, but it's uh, yeah. it's mainly just us chatting at this yeah. point. Yeah. So we um, we moved in the middle of August, um, and we're oh, like 15 minutes south of Fredericton. So we're at literally a stone's throw from the Russian Gornish covered bridge. So we can like, we saw it in like the drone video that they took of the house. It was like, oh my God, you know, it was like super cool. Yeah, we've never had so much space like for ourselves ever, and around ever. us. Like, it's just, um, and we've also never been so close to like Starbucks. So Yeah, that's a super weird thing for us. Like, so when we were in Ontario, we were rural, 
but it was, I mean, there was a couple things within 20 minutes, but like not really. Um, and it was a good hour drive one way to get to like your home Depot or, you know, a grocery store that didn't suck. Or, I mean, like there was like things that you just had to drive a long way to get to. Um, and here we're like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to pop into the, you know, capital city, pop yeah. back out again. And like, like I drive clear, like I, so I, I, um, I, I do work two days a week out of the house. Um, and I have to go like all the way through Fredericton from north or from south to north and then back again. And I tell you, I've never had an easier commute in my life. And it's just really weird. Um, uh, it's, so it's called that uh, Rush of Cornish. It's not so, spelled like that. No, no. It's yeah. Like I said it wrong for the longest time. But it's um, so we're kind of if you take like Fredericton and Oromocto, we're like there. Yeah. But an hour from St. John. Um so on the other side, I think, on the other side of Base Gauge Town from you guys, I think. Um, but I, I don't know all the areas. Yeah, I'm still, like, trying to figure it out. Because people will be like, oh, yeah, they're over there. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I'm like, I have no idea. Um, and I think we, but we're getting it. We're figuring it out. So I think we touched on um, kind of starting a plan for how you're going to manage the trees yeah. as they, oh, go, yeah, you know, as they kind of grow awesome. up. Um, your standard practices, the most used ones are going to be, um, dormant sprays yeah. and then different sprays at different points. Um, some of which like are, are like copper and some of them are different, yeah. different pesticides. And, I mean, correct me um, if I'm wrong, but you don't have to worry about that too much in the first year. Uh, depending on your pests. Depends on what's around, but yeah. so that's the standard stuff. You can go that route. There's plenty of information on it. We're trying to find a way around that. There are ways of doing it. Um, usually, um, there's a couple sources but it usually has to do with um, foliar feeding and if you are consistently foliar feeding with something that has um, uh, so that's been fermented basically it's got um, molasses and uh, it's a compost tea essentially but with uh, different things in it and apple cider vinegar and, and various things it can be made a lot of different ways but the idea is if you're spraying that as you're feeding not only are you fertilizing it's colonizing the leaves so if it's colonizing the leaves, there's no room for anything else to kind of glom on and, and start uh, uh, living there. Yeah. So that's the idea is it's a preventative thing. If the tree is really healthy and the soil is really healthy and there's different ways of dealing with both, then the tree has its best chance of naturally fighting off stuff. And then if you're outwardly colonizing the leaves with good things, then that's one more level of defense. And when it rains, it goes away, though, so you do it again. Yeah. So it's kind of it's a, it's a management thing. Um, and that's the general gist of it. And as far as soil, we actually don't know what we're working with here. No, our last place we, we don't had, really know. Uh, we know that one side can grow grain. Yeah. And well, the other side is mostly hay. One's but wetter, one's like, drier. Um, oh, we know. Our last place was uh, a clay loam. Oh, it was really nice. Um, it was really like it, was, it really held water, but not to a, a stupid degree. Really good. Um, it even though it was clay, it didn't turn rock hard. Yeah. So it was uh, it was pretty pretty nice. We. Put the like trees it's famous, in. actually. It's like the Honeywood loam. Like yeah, it's we, like a, it's a big deal where we were from. We dug a hole, we put our trees in, and then we mulched it with uh, half rotted hay that we just had around, mm -hmm. um, and piled it up fairly high. And I think I watered once or twice, and I probably twice. probably didn't need to any of the time. So we didn't see any sign of wilting. There's no stress about it. So even yeah, with the, the heat of the summer and their first summer, where they're most uh, uh, susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. The soil and the, with the mulch, it, they were fine. Yeah. A lot of places they say, oh, you should um, irrigate, you should have hose going along. Uh, we didn't do that. No. We just made sure we mulched heavily and we would hand water if we needed to. But that was with that good soil. Um, and then we had to spend most of our time getting ready for the wind. So where we were before, um, the wind was insane and we just knew we were going to have breakage. So we were putting in T-posts on either side of the tree. Um, and then we had all the equipment ready to like attach them to both sides. Um, and here, on one hand, I don't think we're going to have to do it. On the other hand, I mean, we do get hurricanes here. I mean, like, it would really suck if we had one of those, like, once in a decade, like, really bad hurricanes um, and lost all our trees. So we're, And it looks good if you do it right. So we're you will, probably going to do that again. Especially with dwarf trees, you will need to stake them. Yeah. And it's not, they sometimes they say, oh, it's just to establish them. Uh, with dwarf trees, you basically just need it. Because yeah. with dwarf yeah. trees, there's shallow roots which is part of the reason they're dwarfs. So high winds, especially when there's all that fruit hanging, the tree's going to rip right out of the ground. Yeah. And so, when do we get hurricanes? We get hurricanes right when they're all ripening. So like, yeah, 
yeah. steak them. Yeah. <laughs> um, we we for the sake of it looking yeah, pretty, we them. did stakes right beside the tree. We had the tree in the middle and attached it that way. You mm -hmm. you don't want to straight jacket them. You want the tree to be able to move a little bit yeah. and also be careful about the rubbing. So there's specific tree ties and like rubber type things you can use. Um, you don't have to. There's low tech ways of doing it too. But you want the tree to be able to move. Otherwise, it won't have any reason to get stronger itself. Yeah. Um, and you know that that metaphor goes to a lot of things. But <laughs> so um, you want it to be able to have to put up a little bit of a fight on its own. You just don't want it to rip out of the ground. Well, we found the best way to do that, like the easiest, well, fastest way, um, was uh, to use T posts and then paint them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we had access to a lot of T posts, which is neither here nor there, but. T posts are going to be more expensive than wooden posts. Yeah. Um, but hell, you put it takes like five minutes and they're both in. I mean, yeah. And then you paint it and it looks amazing and it's not going to rot. Like it's. I mean, there are benefits. There's benefits. Yeah. So a lot of the other, the most common way of staking them now is on an angle. You got your tree going this way and you put the stake in that way. Um, when the wind's going that way and it and it keeps it and you kind of brace it that way um, with a little cross brace. So there's different ways. It's easy to Google um, different bracing styles, but you are going to want to uh, stake them. Yeah. Somehow. Hey, Jim. Um, maple trees. So we do have maple trees. Do we know where they are? No. Apparently there's a handful of but, ones over there. Um, there are maple trees. We do plan on doing that. Um, uh, have we missed our window? We might have missed our window. For what? Getting prepared enough. Oh, we can buy it. That. You need it yeah. for when, like, when it's oh, when stuff starts so. warming up and the, yeah. the sap starts flowing. Yeah. I'm more thinking um, of like, like we can get the equipment fine. It's just like all the boiling stuff. I don't know. We're not. I mean, we're not planting them for it this year. We probably will do. Oh, we can do it on the hill because we've got the. It's got a slope. Perfect. Um. So yes, yes. Just not. The the hard enough. thing, like getting this the sap, yeah. isn't that hard. Again, you can you can do it low tech and just get it. Um, the problem is you got to boil that off yeah. and you can do that by sticking a pot full of the sap on top of your barbecue, but then you're, you're trying to factor in what's the price of propane, how long, how many hours you have to boil yeah. that thing. We've it gets it pretty boiling, inefficient, so. pretty fast. And it's, if you're just, if you don't really care and you just want to get your own maple syrup, it doesn't really matter. You just I love it. maple syrup. Oh my God. Like if I, I mean, I used to put maple syrup in my coffee instead of sugar. Um, back when we could afford that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It's expensive to do that. Uh, and not that maple syrup, well, it, meant it is expensive, but I drink it absolute shit when I'm coffee. When people do so, maple syrup, they want yeah. you want a sugar shack and you yeah. want an outdoor wood setup so you can burn and how wood. Fun. Oh my God. And the, and the like, tray so it spreads that. it out so the fire, you know, everything's yeah. going. And you got the candy thermometer and you, and you do it kind of quickly yeah. that way. And that's an efficient way of doing it. Yeah. And just wait, when Jack gets his, his tentacles into that topic, I mean, Oh my God. Yeah. So we're if we have all the things and it's going to be big and crazy. Yeah. So the answer is maybe this year we'll do yeah. it. We'll, we'll definitely at least find and mark all of the trees. So we're but it might be year. in the summer. I mean, cause it, should I be able to identify the trees when they don't have leaves on them? Absolutely. Can I? Mm. Now maple, maple syrup, it's not for pure maple syrup. It's pretty expensive stuff so yeah. maybe the math works fine even with propane but uh yeah. so we'll we'll see and i think yeah. food prices are going going up so uh oh how many acres are needed for the trees um we we did and we didn't so um so basically uh what i use and it's actually really helpful so once you decide once uh which trees like what size you're going with man that got confusing um once you decide what size you're going with so if, if you're doing dwarf like us we want about 20 feet between them um, then you can go on to GONB uh, on like right on your property and then start figuring out the actual distances and the approximate spot you want them. So when I did ours, so that little graphic that you saw with the with the triangle, um, that worked out to something like 0 0.67 acres. So, and again, we're thinking we can probably get 40 trees in that. Have to redo our math maybe and just because the triangle is going to make it a little bit different maybe. Um, but that's kind of, I mean, max an acre for up to 40, 50 do, trees. Do you have an area that you know you want to put trees in, or do you have a list of trees that you want to find out how much space <laughs> you need to use for it? Yeah. Cause if you have lots of land and you're just trying to figure out how much you're having to dedicate, cause you've got this list, that's the opposite of, uh, kind of what we're doing where it's, we have a space and we're going to fit as many in as we can. Yeah. Um, and we may end up doing like another area somewhere different because we haven't even touched the fact that I want to do Russian olive. 
Yeah. And have like a lot of them. They're, they're really good. pheasants like them and chucker like them and stuff. And we've got a bunch of those. So. We, in our last place, we had a specific area, kind of like we're doing now, yeah. that we knew we wanted to put trees. And then we worked out the spacing and we had planned on doing just dwarfs, which it sounds like you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we ended up having grabbing some semi dwarfs and we were just like, well, we'll treat them like dwarfs. Yeah. And we wanted every one of them in an eight by eight by eight yeah. cube. And we were going to prune to that. Um, and it was fairly labor intensive to keep them that way. But we were spacing about 16 feet apart in a grid. So we basically, we mapped it out and we measured the space exactly. And we put little flags in the ground and we just kind of visualized, we did it on the computer first and then double checked in person. And we found out how many trees we could put. Yeah. And now this time we're doing it a little bit differently where we like just want like a shit ton of trees. We want more than we can ever possibly eat ourselves um both for livestock for compost again just like kind of prepping for things going terribly wrong um and then for um i mean for selling for bartering like we would like to do some level of that um because that's part of what we do here is that we want i mean you can prep all you want you can help sell all you want but like if your neighbors are starving and you don't have enough i mean like that's kind of part of it for me right like um yeah that's what so yeah, last time we had the area and then we had to make it work. And then this time we had the list of trees and we're going to make it work. But I mean, we've got, we went from eight acres to 64 acres. So we've, we've got some wiggle room here, which is an, an interesting problem to have. It's one thing when you've got like a postage stamp and you're just like, okay, this is what I have to work with. And then here we were just like, shit, where do, where do we start? And I mean, permaculture is really the only way that we have any ability to even get over this problem because we can look at our zones and be like, okay, you know, we need things in zone one, we need zone two, and you know, going up from there. Otherwise I think we'd be totally lost. Yeah. Now <laughs> I, don't know what we would do. I mentioned something about you can germinate the seeds and plant them. And that's true. And you'll get something resembling, you know, the fruit. Yeah. Um, but they're not going to be small. They're not going to be dwarfs. The only reason yeah, dwarfs are dwarfs is because they graft them onto rootstock that makes them small. So um, when you when you have the seed and you do it that way, don't plant it. Don't think you all will just keep expanding the trees in my orchard. They're going to be standards. They'll be huge. Yeah, like so massive, plant massive plant them, trees. Plant them in the so. corner of your property or something. Yeah. It's like when you see, so when you see these like super, super old, um, like hundred something year old apple trees that are on these random homesteads that people like are reclaiming kind of, um, they're like that. And I mean, you got to imagine that that tree was pruned like crazy while that, you know, original homesteader was doing all that stuff. So, I mean, that's how you get these like monstrous apple trees that you can't really manage, you know, um, which is fine if you've got a hundred of them and they're just dropping fruit. I mean, like it's, <laughs> that's fine. But for, for an orchard, it's a little bit different, you know? Yeah. Some, um, some of the, the old, um, depending on how old ooh, the trees are, they would go and they would bring seeds from the homestead they came from in Europe or wherever, yeah. and they would plant them, and they knew there was going to be a variety of them. All the apples are going to be different, and they just figured out what they were good for as they went. Some are better for pies, some are better for uh, uh, ciders, and drying. so they just kind of worked it out. All oh, these ones are more sour, these ones are more sweet. You can eat these ones fresh, and they just they figured it out. Yeah. Now we've gotten kind of. Um, used to just being able to get the one for the exact purpose and yeah. and that's fine but it doesn't mean you can't plant stuff from seeds yeah. uh, just be aware of the size yeah. that they're gonna and we'll, be. yeah we'll be doing that too so another thing actually um that i should bring up when it comes to like the amounts is uh birds and wildlife so they're gonna figure it out i mean especially things like your cherries and probably like your, your thinner skinned fruits i mean the birds are going to be all over that. The so, day that the cherries turn red, oh, your tree there. is going there. to be overloaded <laughs> with birds. Yeah. So, um, you so there's be, two ways to deal with that. It's going to be really quick. Yeah. Well, there, really, there's three ways to deal with that, but there's like two effective ways to deal with that. Um, and one is that you have a small number of trees and you, thanks, Jim, um, and you like cover them with some kind of bird netting or you've got bangers like you see in the, the wineries. So it just sounds like you're constantly hearing gunshots. Um, so you can protect the trees or you can plant so many and so many different kinds of things that your tree is not going to target. So that's kind of where we're going with it. Um, especially with, um, with the food forest stuff. So we're doing that out in areas that hopefully the wildlife is going to think are safer than like right close to the house. You can hang pie plates 
from branches also, yeah. and they flash in the sun and looks like movement, and then the birds. Yeah, like the, the disposable ones, not like you know ceramic. Yeah. <laughs> so the bird netting, that's a thing yeah. you can do. What I've heard is that the first year you do it works fine. Yeah. When you start pulling it off for winter and after when you're harvesting, you end up inevitably breaking it in different spots. Now there's holes, yeah. and you could painstakingly sew it together. And you, if you didn't store it very well and you pull it apart, it's kind of all t jumbled up. You try to put it on the second year, and there's these holes around. And the birds will find those holes. And the problem is they get end up getting tangled and stuck in the nets. Yeah. And then you've got these birds that you have to untangle or they've died in the net. And it's kind of horrible. So if you're very good with your netting, you can do the netting. Uh, but be aware that there are issues with it also. Yeah. Like we're opting to not do it and just have so much that like. If you have a very, if you have a very pruned um, dwarf and you've made it very small, you could potentially have a sticks around holding the netting up away from yeah. the branches and then that would work and you can see that too like if you uh different people we've seen on youtube and google and whatnot have done stuff like that where they're low enough and they've got their big posts and then they've got like even not hardware cloth but i mean like they've got like you know tough netting um yeah i've seen that you could put a, a stake options. up and then it's like a little cube hung from that stake and then the netting goes off of that so it's kind of held outward from the top and it kind of drapes downward um, and keeps it off the branches. Well, kind of like, you know, for like peacocks or pheasants or any, any kind of bird that wants to like fly out, it's the same kind of idea, right? They can't fly in, um, which is a really cool dual purpose thing you could do for some kind of bird. If you like fenced your orchard area and then you had some kind of bird that isn't going to destroy your trees inside, keeping the other birds out, that might be, that might actually be really cool. I want peacocks really badly. Um, they don't serve a purpose other than I like them. I'm sure they do um, as good. Probably. But my feathers are nice. Yeah. I like them. I so, like them. Yeah. Owl, I should say, not just I would have a bunch of males. Um, yeah, so birds, but be aware that they want the fruit. Wasps. The squirrels want your stuff. The the apples, depending on the type of apple, especially the wasps can like get Like we had deer run right up to our apple trees with dogs outside barking. Like the, right the up. Deer, like the deer were visiting... Yeah. Nightly, yeah. I'm sure. And then we started seeing them occasionally in the day also. Yeah. Um, they were so, bold. And the deer can reach everything you can reach. So yeah, be aware Be aware of that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. bear, apparently, we like that's a new thing for us to handle here is bear. Yeah. And we I'm, know we have one. No, I'm sure a bear would eat an apple. I don't hear about bears plaguing orchards the way the deer do. Um, well, yeah. We'll see so. about that because I don't really, I mean, I like having bears here. I, I don't want one in the front yard. Yeah, that's they don't. Like I mean, that. the deer visiting, like we didn't find. It, it probably depends on your area. We didn't find the deer cleared out the apple. There's still apples no, there. No, um, it was the wasps. Like there was wasp on one tree, and we couldn't get near the tree. Like we just couldn't. It was we were somewhere in hurt. Now I think what happened with that tree is that they had it over ripened yeah. on the tree. So it was a certain variety that uh, when they fell mm -hmm. off, they they didn't fall off when they ripened. So yeah. they were still there. And actually, um, we should probably go too. Yes. We've actually been on for like an hour. So <laughs> yeah. it's funny how this happens. We're always like, what do we say? And then we get on and it's like, oh, well, I think we have a lot to say. Actually. I think we hit the different things, so, spacing and selection. Yeah. And oh, our, our varieties, nice. though. We're doing apples, pears, quince, plum, apricots, peach, and cherry. Yeah. Some of those That's things you exciting. wouldn't think you could even grow in Canada. Yeah. Apparently you can. Yeah. So, so stoked. Yep. Super stoked. Um, I'm sure we'll do a bunch more on this. Um, we'll try to get this up onto the YouTube and do like an orchard section. Yeah, um, on our YouTube, we need to, to we it. need to talk about uh, moving here and all that stuff. Well, yeah, Anyways. we've got a whole bunch of stories because like we like it feels like we like started this process, but it was under our old homestead name, and then everything went crazy for a year, and then now here we are again, and we feel like we've already introduced ourselves and done all that stuff, but like we haven't. Yeah. So, so we need to do that. Yeah. If you have any questions while you're uh, looking through the website, the catalog isn't up, but the website is live. So yeah. all the stuff they have is available. They just don't have it in a pretty catalog yet. Yeah. Uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. But I wouldn't way. wait for the, the print catalog. No. Because Order it as soon as you know what you want. Um, yeah. Stuff's yeah. going to be hard to get. Yeah. Um, and depending, I mean, depending on what people want and when they want it and whatnot, I mean, we might be able to do like a bit of a New Brunswick co-op order here because we've got... I mean, we are practically going to be in the highest level of ordering from these from these guys. So our shipping, like, we're just through the roof. So we might as well all share that. So I don't know. But 
Yeah. 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 Touch base awesome. if you have any questions cool. um, when We're you're walking through there. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Have you, you want to say bye? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have All a good right. night, everyone. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye. I love you.